Isuzu is presently intelligence testing its customers. If you buy the new MUX, especially that mid-spec LSU, and you pay the undiscounted recommended price, dude, you fail. In this report, how the cake of corporate fiasco gets baked. It's either unprincipled or incompetent conduct. I am flat out struggling to identify a more forgivable explanation. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap for buyers here in Australia. Website for that, obviously. Or you can just click the card that's out there now, dude. In my last report on MUX, I detailed the likely outrageous ramp up in price for what is by any objective estimation still a pretty average seven-seat SUV spun up hastily off the back of a ute. This has come to pass, and it's even worse than I predicted. Mainly because I'm such a nice guy, clearly. Giving car makers the benefit of the doubt endlessly. Just ask anyone. MUX driveway prices have since been confirmed and they are up out friggin' rageously. Between 9,000 bucks and 15 grand, depending on the model grade. That COVID friggin' inflation. They have to be having a lend, don't they? Like, check this out. It's a screenshot from Isuzu's online pricing calculator today. This image is the launch discount drive away offer for the range topping LST 4x4. Drive away at 63,990, which is allegedly a discount of just over seven grand compared with Isuzu's arbitrarily irrelevant undiscounted drive away price. Kind of shows you how much fat there is in the pricing right there, doesn't it? But this gets worse because, check this out, right? This is the same exercise on the same day, but one model grade down. Everything else is equal. MUX LSU 4x4, Jesus, $64,921. Recommended drive away price, two friggin' day. The mid spec car is today roughly $1,000 more expensive than the top of the range. Can you hear that? That's Rod Serling reading his legendary intro right there. There won't be any discounts, every one of these will go out at full freight. That is what one Isuzu dealer allegedly told Silver Medal Dowling over at Meat Society Digest, a Costello's Cockheads publication. Of course, the dealer's name was suppressed because Isuzu administers the sandpaper enema to dealers who choose to speak out in this way publicly. I'm told it's an 80 grit offence. Nasty chafing. On Muppet World, Kermit and Miss Piggy might contrive a pricing structure like this and it might actually fit the story. But even in Australia, where we can't deal with bushfires or what will go down in the annals of history as the mildest pandemic ever, this is absurd, okay? And just so you know that I'm not a tinfoil hat wearer on any of this, I'm saying that firefighters are not appropriately resourced and funded in this country. And we are extremely fortunate indeed as a species that COVID-19 is much, much less transmissible than measles and not nearly as lethal as some other recent virus like MERS, for example. And I'd suggest, perhaps as a nation, if we didn't just bend over and spread the vault wide open every time Lockheed Martin or Raytheon or Naval Group gave us a quick booty call, that might be an improvement. One of my first activities as your next Prime Minister to make Australia less shit. The fiery funding, pandemic pounding, military industrial complex chastity belt bill. Well done, ScoMo. Again, dude, consistency. 
What I'm saying is the real pandemic in this country is high-level incompetence. It's across the board, right? MUX pricing is just another brick in the incompetence wall, in my view. To use marketing speak, it's time for the pricing policy to be reimagined. Like, you front up for the range-topping LST, okay? And you drive away for $63,990, you're a walk-up start for that big fat 7,000 buck discount. Or 50 lashes everywhere else in the range. Like, you buy the lower grade LSU for a thousand bucks more because every one of these is going out at full freight and you don't get the fat 20 inch alloys. You also miss out on the front passenger electric seat adjustment and the extra electric adjustment built into the driver's seat on LST. Plus, there's no seat heating in that one. You pay more, you get less, yes! And there's no Tire pressure monitoring, no LED ambient lighting inside, no remote engine starting, no auto dimming rear view mirror on a 64,000 buck car, you cheap pricks. And you pay more, but get less, yes. In my view, car makers really need to spend substantially less time in the corner office talking about friggin DNA and narratives with their fingers deeply inserted into each other's digestive tracts metaphorically and much more time engaged with real people in the real world spending real money on real cars like pro tip dudes nobody in the corner office ever actually buys a car inside car maker businesses. The cars are just laid on. They are completely out of touch with ordinary buyers. This is just how out of touch they are. Here's an example. The first time I realised the staggering breadth of this out of touchedness. Right? Years ago, I was a photographer at a car industry event being paid by a car maker to cover it. And the event was a dealer conference, which is where essentially the car maker is the fluffer and the dealers are the actors. Okay. This was at the Palazzo Versace on the Gold Coast, which is kind of Sodom and Gomorrah by the sea. And the ballroom is packed, right? It's all senior execs and dealers and sales managers and their wives. So it's like wall-to-wall -wall back slapping and big Rolexes and fake tits and bad Armani. <laughs> and they're all swilling 20-buck beers and bitching out loud about how there's no friggin' money selling new cars anymore. I'm not kidding. But this is the first time I have ever seen car buyers being expected to pay more for a substantially lesser model grade. It's beyond absurd. Paying more for less is an inversion of every sane commercial reality. Like, even if they do start to discount LSU and LSM at dealer level, it's still a walk-up start for LST buyers, like seven grand off, no muss, no fuss. But whatever discount you do manage to eke out in the cheap seats, it's going to be down to your skill as a negotiator, and let's face it, the dealer is better at this than you, 99.9% .9 of the time. You have to be absolutely in the know, like fully clued up, and somewhere on the sociopathy scale to beat a car dealer at his own game. Which is kind of why I wrote a book about it, frankly, after wearing a hidden camera into all those car dealerships for a current affair all those years ago. That was the first time I ever got a death threat on the phone late at night. Yes! <sighs> the olden days. Pro tip, okay? Hidden camera investigations have to be done in Queensland, at least in Australia, because there's different surveillance devices legislation up there, okay? People say sociopath like it's a bad thing. This is, of course, why everyone else, you for example, must do extensive research before you ever set foot into any car dealership because you don't understand the dynamics, generally. A, the process is an ambush and you are the peanut who's standing on the X playing this absurd game of OODA loop catch-up and it's hard to survive in that situation. And B, 
you must never presume that the underlying foundations of the upcoming deal are in any way equitable or even <laughs> vestigially rational in this case. Certainly not here, okay? You might just be going into browse, okay? But to a dealer, you are a soft target of opportunity and they are fully weapons free, okay? Car makers and dealers pay heaps to get customers in the door. That is certainly how they see it. And therefore, to them, when you are standing there, you are not leaving without a fight, okay? You're in the browsing business. They're in the hooking, landing, gutting, filleting, and friggin' frying business. It's lunch, and you're on the menu, dude. It's also asymmetric, and at the very least, the objectives here are not closely aligned. It's not just Isuzu here. This is about buying cars generally, all right? But people are walking into Isuzu ute dealers right now and paying the full freight for overpriced mid-spec MUXs today, right? They're driving home in a worse MUX that costs more. And dealers and Isuzu are making more money out of these mid-spec buyers because these babies are undiscounted. You shouldn't have to fight for every cent off just because you're not buying the range topper. Like, that's just fundamentally unfair. And the salesman, right, he's just walking the unwitting, unwitting punter, that's you, through the process. Like, no, sir, unfortunately, we are unable to offer you a discount. These vehicles have just been so popular. Just stand here, yes, right there on top of that X. I'm just going to put a couple of rounds into you now, right into the middle. It might sting a little. And then a quick failure drill into the head. And after that, just bliss. Next. It's an intelligence test, right? If you buy the MUX LSU in particular at full freight, you fail, dude. Isuzu used to have decently transparent, somewhat equitable driveaway discounts across the board, but the price of the new MUX and this pricing strategy, it's reprehensible. It seems to me that they think this vehicle is so much better than it actually is. They're in those meetings, warming up their fingers, metaphorically, completely out of touch with the fact that this is a middle-of-the-road upgrade for a geriatric predecessor. The only thing making it look vaguely outstanding is the geriatricity, the geriatricity, whatever you call that, the age on death's door of the predecessor. And I further suspect that they're banking on you copying covid flation on the chin as an explanation for such an unjustified price hike because this new model is objectively not revolutionary. It's a bit better, at best. They'll probably get away without discounting the lesser grades for the time being because there's latent demand from rusted on Isuzu buyers who are all rushing into upgrade right at the moment. That can't last forever. However, we expect a high level of repeat ownership. The reputation and the ownership enjoyment that customers have with our vehicles is very strong, so we don't see why that wouldn't translate to them going into the new model. This is also true of people who just don't shop around. People buy Camrys this way, not because they're the epitome of automotive excellence. They kind of just always bought Camrys, you know? Isuzu's a bit like that, and so is Subaru, I guess. Only Isuzu had a following previously, in part, because the product was so damn cheap vis-a-vis -vis the competition. Anyway, that was Ben Jager quoted back there, the boss of Isuzu Ute Schittsville, talking to Silver Metal Dowling <laughs> over a nice juicy T-bone or ribeye, most possibly. I think they're both carnivores, like Josh is. All that protein and iron, it gives him the courage to be the second most hated motoring journalist in this great nation. But not the first. To me, this pricing strategy is an insult. And you are a fool if you stand on the X and let them fire those volleys at you. Unwittingly, perhaps, but still a fool. MUX is just not that good, okay? All these converted utes are a fail unless you actually want to tow more than two tons or drive on really challenging off-road terrain. And I didn't say dirt roads then, right? I mean the actual rough stuff. You have to want to spend time sucking ammonia at Dingo Piss Creek. Who doesn't?
These transitioned utes are agricultural and unrefined compared with a Kluga, a CX-9, a Sorrento or a Santa Fe, which are all objectively better for the conventional transportation of large families. Among MUX's notable omissions, okay, it's still running without all-wheel drive for high traction surfaces, and it's using a 1980s style transfer case with only two-wheel drive high range, four-wheel drive high range and four-wheel drive low range, and four-wheel drive settings are all locked at 50-50 with those prop shafts, excuse me, mechanically synchronized. That's disgraceful in a vehicle Isuzu calls extraordinary and exquisite, and which it alleges is, quote, coupled with the latest technology. Like, that's just not accurate. Mum driving the kids home on some second-rate bitumen road one day in the rain, perhaps at night, would definitely benefit from proper torque-distributing all-wheel drive. And you get that in a Pajero Sport, for example, for about a thousand bucks less, undiscounted. Isuzu, of course, has a three-phase bullshit generator seemingly in-house, and it claims MUX is, quote, fully equipped for your next off-road adventure, as well as, quote, muscular, modern, and luxurious. Luxurious, right? Despite lacking ventilated front seats, even on the highest grade. And you certainly get that on a CX-9, a Sorento, or a Santa Fe. And you get all-wheel drive as well for high traction surfaces on at least some of those variants, incidentally. Isuzu doesn't chill the centre console bin with the HVAC system either. And there's no extendable sun visors on MUX. That's just penny-pinching writ large. Like, you know that Hilux and Ranger both have onboard inverters that turn the car's native 12-volt DC supply into low-current 240-volt AC like you get out of the power point at home, okay? Not here, dude, right? If you want to charge your laptop, therefore, it's off to JCAR Electronics for you if you're an Isuzu fanboy, like, fully equipped. Please. If MUX was some sort of massive leap forward for the breed, you could almost excuse these absurdly pompous positioning statements and Tokyo gold winning price hikes, right? But this MUX is just the same shit on a slightly different day, somewhat upgraded. It's got new implants and a bit of filler, right? It's been using the Stairmaster regularly for a few weeks, watching Friends reruns or something, but... It's really not revolutionary. And the base model, Jesus, it's so emphatically poverty. They have fed and combusted their asses to make you look like a proper penny pincher if you buy that poverty pack. The base model grill is awful, like it's beyond awful. I know that's a subjective determination, but hey. No front parking sensors on the poverty pack either. That's disgraceful cost cutting right there with a clear safety cost attached to it, okay? Rear sensors only on the poverty pack. And did they save like 10 bucks a car by doing that? And get this, okay, there is a push button engine start stop button across the range with this vehicle, but it's only paired with a proper proximity key on LST and LSU. You still have to unlock the car, the LSM, using the key fob, okay? That's just awful correction. It's muscular, modern, and luxurious. Yes. What it really is, is wholly cynical, I'd suggest. And for a vehicle builders fully equipped for your next off-road adventure, as well as the, quote, perfect travelling companion for 3.5 ton towing, quote, whatever the terrain, then riddle me this, OK? Why has Isuzu seen fit only to include tyre pressure monitoring only in the range-topping LST. That's insane, given how vital tyre pressures are to safe highway driving, safe off-roading, and safe heavy towing. We are absolutely not discussing big buck features here. We're just not. This is small beer when you're fitting it in a production environment. And 3.5 tonnes whatever the terrain, unquote, get real. In the real world, tow capacity diminishes rapidly as terrain severity degrades, terrain severity increases, whatever. As it gets harder to drive and slog through something, okay, you cannot tow the same weight as you were doing before on the bitumen or a good dirt road. 
And if you don't think that that is the case, you open the window of opportunity and hand the friggin' Grim Reaper a gilt-edged invitation to take you out because towing something that heavy is extremely serious. It's this kind of bullshit propaganda in particular that leads people who have just pushed papers around their offices their whole lives to believe shitboxes like this can tow three and a half tons anywhere, anytime, carrying anything fully pimped right across their entire retirement, which could be pretty brief if you attempt that. Sometimes this happens with disastrous consequences. And I know I am a flippant asshole, but I'm not being flippant about that. Towing three and a half tons is a very serious undertaking, and I wouldn't want to go too far off road like that, no matter what, whatever the terrain claims are made. It's therefore, in my view, socially irresponsible to claim this kind of thing, right? It just is. And if Isuzu wants to take issue with me on this, here's the gauntlet. Okay, throwing down on the floor at the feet right now. If that claim is, quote, the perfect travelling companion for three and a half tonne towing whatever the terrain, and based on Isuzu's website today, that certainly is what it seems to be, then I invite Isuzu to supply an MUX with a driver and a three and a half tonne chitois, and I will bring a camera crew and I'll choose whatever the friggin' terrain, okay? That could be fun, but if we do it... If I were you, I wouldn't buy a demonstrator for the next few months. Just pro tip. So, I'm sorry, Isuzu fanboys. Not really. But it seems to me the MUX has been carefully constructed to achieve the main overarching imperative of mediocrity. And yet the pricing is one of the most cynically extortionate boardroom echo chamber exercises that I have ever seen. The try it on corner office test. <laughs> yes. And you know what? For the first three months or something, with a line of fanboys over the friggin' horizon, this might even work. But if I were you, I'd wait.